Hey guys, how are you? I hope that you guys are doing well. So I'm back with yet another video and very important video in which we are going to learn something about data analysis interview questions. Again guys, I have picked and choose those questions which are very important and very basic. Now this is bare minimum video which you which is least expected from out of you if you are going for a uh, data analytics role. All right. So uh, let's like in a layman's like see I don't want to waste much of a time and I request you to watch the videos till the end like this video till the end because and at least if you can't take the note notes out of it uh, the I will give the PDF link in the description go ahead and download it and read it like once or twice and thrice and then watch this video again and then you will be set for the uh, your interview all right again SQL video is uh, SQL SQL is again very important also but I'm planning to make a different video out of it because SQL is altogether a different it takes a different whole set of video because it's that important all right so that's why wait for that for that if you want to wait for that and if you want to access that video I want you like I request you to subscribe this channel all right and uh, see now without pasting further ado uh, so what is data analysis guys in a layman's language if I want to if I have to tell you what is what is data analysis is like as the name suggests, we analyze the data. Now data, we like data is generated in a, in a, in a terabyte format, all right? So we get the data, we get the raw data, all right? We load the data, we clean the data, we summarize the data, and then we um, present the model to the, to the board members or to a manager or anyone whom I'm presenting to, all right? This is a very simple, simple in a layman's language. This is the definition of it. Now guys, one more thing which I want to suggest to you is if you can like make the interview, if you are sitting in an interview, I like I, if you can make the interviewer understand in a layman's language, like layman's means normal guy who don't know anything about it. And if you can make him understand that what is data analysis or whatever the question he asks, if you can make him understand in a layman's language, then that's the best thing which can happen to you. All right. So this is the approach I follow and I think you should also follow it. This is my suggestion. All right. So data analyst is the uh, analysis is the process of systematically now systematically again you will not perform so there is a hierarchy right so you won't be able to perform um, uh, summarization with the raw data you have to go like you you want you have to get the data you have to clean the data and then you have to summarize the data and then you have to uh, present the data in a good form right applying by applying statistical or logical techniques again now these two things we are going to learn in coming slides differential statistics and inferential statistics are two statistical methods which is used by data analysts analysts okay to describe and illustrate condense and recap and evaluate data again the sum of what I have just told you right it is used by every industry which is why data analysts are high in demands right it is definitely used by every industry now consider one thing guys if any any industry which is not using data analyst or data uh, is not going to survive for long okay because data is the new oil which we say right now i'll support this by an example now so uh, how data uh, data gives you boom in the business requirements i'll tell you uh, say example or let's say netflix okay now read hashtag founded netflix right so at that time there were not many people who were using Netflix, right? It was CD. I would uh, seriously recommend you to watch the documentary of Reed Hashting. Um, so at that time, there was there was not much people. So at that time, it was possible for uh, the employees of Netflix. It might be uh, possible for the employees of the Netflix to take care of the personal, uh, take care of individual uh, users, right? But at this time, there are millions of users of Netflix. It's, it's not possible, right? And it is said that, um, and the majority, 80% of the revenue which is generated from Netflix comes from recommendations, all right? And who recommends uh, in the Netflix app for the user? Of course you, the data analyst, right? So this is why, that's why. So 80% of the revenue of the Netflix comes from the recommendations. Again, it is used in uh, Google as well, Google search keywords you search right so that they recommend right or, or youtube or uh, amazon amazon app or flipkart app right so these all recommendation who does it like data analyst does it all right or data scientist if i may say so so that's why data analysts are huge in demand that's why you are watching this video because you are going for an interview or you want to learn about data analyst 
So a data analyst's sole responsibility is to play around with a large amount of data. Again, large amount of data, guys. You cannot even imagine how how large amount of data. So I'll tell you, I, I was attending one webinar where I got to know that it will take another five years to take out the records from past five years, right? So for example, like uh, if I I don't know if you have understood this line or not. I'll rephrase it. So it will take next five years to load the data. uh like past 5 years ka data right so it that's amount of data it, it is there all right so whatever microsoft excel file you have in your in your uh, computer you just go and check the size of that data that that micro excel file that's only like hardly 5 kb 10 kb or maximum 2 mb or 3 mb right so every second there are terabytes of data which is being uh, generated terabyte is 1024 gb all right and 1 gb is you know you know the rest right so that's why so like millions of millions of data are being generated and you have to use that right you have to use that for the business purpose so who is going to do that data analyst or data scientist right so and uh, amounts of data and search for hidden insights of course you have to search for the hidden insights right uh, that is what you guys do so by interpreting a wide range of data data analyst assist uh, assist organization in understanding the business current state of course any business uh, say for example you are the owner of your business all right so you don't know how my company is performing in the market how how are you going to generate like how are you going to see it so everything data what is there is it in the it is in the excel format or it is in the uh, tabular format so how how are you going to see it that's why data analyst comes into the picture and he shows you the visualization he will develop a very good dashboard using power bi or tableau or anything else and then show it to you in a very beautiful manner so that you will understand things okay so visualization tools like power bi and tableau so if you have not watched my previous video on power bi dashboard which i have created guys main yahan link de dunga i request you to watch that but after this class and if you are like if you are going for an interview at least go go preparing one or two um, dashboards in ta tableau bhi maine kiya hua hai but i will uh, upload it afterwards all right so yeah that is thing so this these are all um, known as data analyst or analysis right now what are the responsibilities of a data analyst guys there has to be some responsibilities right let's let's see what are the responsibilities collect and analyze data using statistical techniques statistical techniques as i have already told you statistical techniques are differential statistics and inferential statistics in the next slide we are going to learn something about that and reports the result accordingly interpret and analyze trends or patterns in a complex data set again data set will not be 2 by 2 column or 3 by 4 column as uh, this is not the data set there will be millions of rows so that's why it's complex again right so establishing business needs together with business teams or management teams of course you have to take everyone along with you so you have to satisfy everyone's need of course right so find opportunities for improvement in existential process or areas and you have to see as a as a data analyst it's not only your um, uh, responsibility to show what is the trend but you have to suggest some um, something so that you, they can take it, take it into consideration also or you can like by say for, for example i was working on a data set uh, last day in which the it was a us data set i can't say much about it but in, in that data set what was happening is um, California had the large number of uh, sales but Colorado was not having the large number of sales so we dig deep into why Colorado is giving us very less sales we dig deep and we have to find the factors which is affecting very less sales and we try to compare it with the California's record why there is a huge demand and why there is no huge demand there is not no demand actually in this so we try to compare we try to take the step like this is my my suggestion to the team right so we try to take the steps from here copy it here and then try to see the trend so this is what you have to, you can give to the manager or who uh, to whom you are explain follow guidelines when processing confidential uh, data or information of course the data is a very confidential a company's data has to be company's data it should not uh, like leak out right so of course you know about it examining uh, the changes and updates that have been made uh, to the source uh, source production system of course now what what does this mean is um, data is being generated every day on a, a, in every second basis right so you can't be developing dashboards for every seconds of data so 
you feed it that, that that's where a data scientist comes into play they build model and then they build the model and then find the best accuracy and then they feed the data every second onto that model and then it gives the results accordingly all right so yeah examine the changes okay provide end users with training on new reports and dashboard again the dashboard which you create right in power bi or tableau or in an, any other uh, softwares the tab the uh, the uh, dashboard which you create at this time it has to be uh, intuitive it has to be insightful it has to be self explanatory if the board members or if uh, to whom you are giving the presentation if they are not understanding it's your responsibility to give uh, the brief about dashboard also right so assist in data storage structure data mining and data cleansing of course this is what you are supposed to do as well now i was telling about uh, statistical techniques right so what what are the statistical techniques used by data analyst now first is descriptive statistics and second is inferential statistics now guys see this this is very important for you to like everything based is on this okay now descriptive statistics describes the basic features of data to provide an overview of a big data not to provide an overview of a big data now again i'm coming to that point again i want to explain you this that you can't take out like you can't decide anything just watching the data you have to perform something onto it and then you make a, make a good insightful date um, dashboard out of it and then you can decide whether this is good or not all right so that is what as it's assist in summarizing reviewing and communicating a meaningful way of course excel data or csv file if you have that will not give you anything that is not insightful the dashboard for that data the dashboard for that data will give you everything they both are the same thing now this dashboard is derived from this excel sheet but this will be more intuitive now who is going to do that of course you right when organization use descriptive statistics of data analysis they they use measure of central tendency and distribution of data now what do you mean by measures of central tendency measures of central tendency is nothing but mean median and mode all right so you don't have to confuse along with this mean is the sum of all observation divided by total number of observation and median is the middle value middle value of an observation after it is being um, in uh, like arranged in the group in the ascending order or the descending order and uh, mode is the maximum number of occurring all right so yeah now we come for inferential uh, so see now this is descriptive statistics you are trying to find the insightful right so for example 30% of the student are lying in 90 plus marks and what is this 40% or 10% uh, 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 yeah this this has to be 10% right so yeah 10% lies below 30% or failed or 20% lies in 50 to 60 50 to 60 and 20% lies in 70 to 80 and 80 or 20% something like that okay now what do you mean by inferential statistics right inferential statistics inferential statistics is used to construct predictions and inferences and make decision from the data now this is majorly used by uh, in inferential statistics it comes a z score and they find lot of things now this is used by data scientist all right so you don't have to much dig deep into it if you are going for a data analyst role but then again you should be knowing about it all right now what are the key skills usually required for a data analyst now what are the key skills i will tell you the most important thing is sql guys again i am planning to have a different sql session because sql is one of the most important aspect in for in um, like when it when it comes to data analyst role so i will make a dedicated video out of it because at this time i am taking out everything else apart from sql all right so sql is very much important see uh, almost how much like 85 85% of uh jo companies prefer sql as a language bi tool power bi tool uh, sorry bi tool business intelligence tools like power bi or tableau and then excel excel it's it's the bare minimum python python or r language i prefer python language okay because it's it's easy to use and etl statistics sars gate no sql now these are thing you can like if you can prepare these four first four if you can prepare first four then that you are ready for Uh, an interview i have ability to organize what are the key skills right ability to organize uh, analyze collect organize collect and disseminate big data accurately efficiently again the, from the past 3 4 slides we have been seeing this only the ability to design design data database construct data models perform data mining and segment data now data mining we are going to study in details in the coming slides 
good understanding of statistical package of for analyzing large data sets like SaaS, SPSS, Microsoft Excel, etc. Efficient problem solving, teamwork, and return and verbal communication skills. Of course, this is this is required by every of the major companies. Excellent at writing queries, queries in SQL, of course. Reports which you develop reports from visualization tools like Power BI and Tableau. And presentation, you should have presentation skills, of course. Then, if you have everything in your brain and you can't, you are not able to take it out, then what is the meaning of that knowledge, right? That's why communication plays a good, very good role, very vital role. So, understanding of data visualization software, including Tableau and Power BI, this is also very important, guys. All right. So, again, now by the end of the slides, you will hear one or two or three or four some things again and again. So, understand if again and again is there, then that is important. Now, what is uh, the data analysis process? Again, becomes to collect the data, to analyze the data, and to create the data. MongoDB and MySQL, we collect the data from the databases, we analyze the data, all right, and then we present the data, all right. So that is the thing. The data is collected from variety of sources and is then stored to be clean and prepared. The step, this step involves uh, removing all the missing values and outliers. Analyze data. Again, data cleaning part is included in the in this part itself. But data cleaning is subheading if you can you can uh, think of. So analyze data. As soon as the data is prepared, the next step is to in, uh, analyze it. Improvement are made by running a model repeatedly. Now this model they are talking about data science models, guys. Okay, linear regression, logistic regression, KNN, decision tree, and SVM, all those kinds. Of, but you don't have to think about it because that's the data science part. Following that, the model is validated to ensure that is meeting the requirements by the accuracy. All right, mm, and then creating report. Creating report is in. Uh, in the end, the model is implemented and reports uh, reports are generated as well as distributed to stakeholders. Reports as in Power BI, Power BI and Tableau. All right, that is what it is trying to say. Now, what are the different challenges one faces during a data analysis? Now, this is again very important, guys, which you have to know. All right, so let's see what. Let me let me change the color of the pen. Man. Yeah, if it is okay. Well, okay, I don't like this let's let's make it dark red yeah okay so duplicate entries again guys duplicate entries and spelling errors now for example i was working to brush up my knowledge of data uh, exploratory data analysis exploratory data analysis is nothing but you try to find out you try to clean out uh, clean the data you try to uh, clean the data and then uh, 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 present it or in the form of like good data right so that is called as exploratory data analysis all right we'll study about this in later slides so now yesterday i was i was like uh, not yesterday like day before yesterday or three days before i was working on this data set called ipl all right just to brush up my knowledge now this there were two years before two years ago there were like only eight teams right if you if you guys know about it there were only eight teams um so if I try to like I try to find out the unique values of uh, the teams, I came across there were nine teams which are showing. Now there were two teams called as Royal Challengers Bangalore and RCB. Now we know, like me and you guys know, that RCB and Royal Challengers Bangalore are the same team. But the machine will interpret at two different teams, right? Because machine is a machine that they, it doesn't know. So we have to see. So that is what spelling error. Now nowadays there's a huge um, uh, there, there's a chat GPT and all taking a lot of uh, uh, interest of people's right so I always have a belief that uh, artificial intelligence can never replicate the human intelligence that is the belief I can have because who created artificial intelligence who created AI the human intelligence right so yeah coming back to the topic so duplicate entries and spelling errors are huge I mean like this is a burden when you come across when you when you uh, data like when you clean the data right it takes 80 percent of the time when you if you have to clean the data because there's a lot of like very bad data which comes out data quality can be hampered and reduced by these errors of course you can't send the data to model building or to data scientists uh, without a, without cleaning the data the representation of data obtained from multiple sources may differ okay so for example if you are collecting data from multiple sources so multiple sources may differ the data right it may cause a delay in the analysis process it may cause the delay in the analysis process if the uh, collected data are combined after being cleaned and organized another major challenge in data analysis incomplete data okay incomplete data so incomplete data is is another big problem which data analyst faces 
this would invariably lead to errors or faulty results of course all right you would have to spend a lot of time cleaning the data if you are extracting data from a poor source so that's right trusting a good source of data okay that that the company's problem not your problem business stakeholders unrealistic timelines and expectation of course this this i don't have to explain anything this is self explanatory you have to be like meeting the deadlines and targets uh, data blending in, uh, in, uh, integration from multiple sources is a challenge particularly if there is no consistent parameter and conviction of course again insufficient data architect architecture and tools to achieve the analytics goals on time of course i just explained you this right in this in this part okay now what is the difference between data mining and data profiling again guys this is start make it a star point it is very 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 important in like i have heard a lot of people saying that they have been asked this question please understand this question acche se because tend to uh, you will tend to confuse a bit now i will try to explain this in a layman's language and then try to read out this thing okay now so for example consider and listen to me very carefully guys don't skip it all right you may increase the speed but don't skip it now you are a user all right so for example you want to order a smartphone you go on amazon app or flipkart app okay you search say for example apple i4 14 okay and the result shows all right and then you order that product so what is what are you doing right now this is a pre uh, pre built database okay pre built database and at in that database flipkart or amazon has stored everything and then you are searching onto that database right you are searching onto that database so what are you doing you are data mining things all right you are data mining it so it's a technical term but you are data mining in a layman's language guys this is the understanding you can understand by this all right now it inv involves analyzing a pre built database to identify patterns okay it in, it also analyzes existing database and large data sets to convert raw data into useful information from there you extract data right there from there you search data it usually involves finding hidden patterns and seeking out new useful and non trivial data to generate useful information okay so like i have just given you example okay now this is how you understand it but that uh, data mining involves a lot of processes as well all right uh, let's go for data profiling guys data profiling now in a layman's language again okay now guys why do i say this in a layman's language is because uh, if you can in explain the interviewer um, in a layman's language thinking that he don't know anything and then you are explaining to a blank face blank guy and he is convinced and he uh, you are explained him like you have explained him perfectly then that's the best thing which can happen to you on that day okay because everyone can retrofire this and then blah 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 in front of the interviewer but not understanding he himself have not understood then how he is going to convey that information to the interviewer right so that's why in a, in a layman's language i always try to explain in a layman layman's language the way i am explaining it to you right now right so that's what uh, so yeah data profiling so for example if in a situation so you are working in a company and uh, so your manager comes up and says ki i want a data from a california uh, california data or say canada data and i want to see the things so you as a data analyst will access the will access the uh, what say will access the uh, database and then you will take out insightful or you will take out relevant information from there and you present it like you make a excel sheet or you make a uh, things and then you present it in front of the manager now what you are doing you are data profiling things all right that is what it involves analyzing of raw data from existing data, existing database all right in this statistic statistical or informative uh, summarizes of the data are collected of course you are going to do that yeah it usually involves the evolution of data sets uh, to ensure consistency uniqueness and logic of course you will try to find out the logic that's why this manager wants wants that right so in data profiling enormous data is identified during the initial stage of analysis okay so you can read it out guys you can read it out and uh, in like what i have told you in a layman's language right this is not the 100% of the definition but yeah try to understand this and then frame your sentences according to that 
all right now classification regression clustering summarization these all are data scientist terms which you don't have to deep think about it but if you are going for data analysis role all right let's merge further yeah now what do you mean by outlier outlier one of the main thing again now this outlier is very 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 important for you as well okay so an outlier is a piece of data that is an abnormal a distance from the other point again like i'm just i will explain you this i will explain you this don't worry this don't get confused in other words in other words it's the data that lies outside the other values in the set if you had pinocchi now pinocchi if you know jiska naag bahut lamba hota tha seventh standard mein english ke class mein hum logo ne padha tha in a class of children the length of his nose compared to the other children would be an outlier because in this set of random so for example let let's say uh, set of random numbers so for example or let's say pinocchi's example so average or uh, say sab ki jo uh, like the nose length of the nose for every class student say 2 cm 3 cm 4 cm or 1 cm 2 cm and then comes pinocchi 50 cm all right so this pinocchi's nose length will be an outlier in other words in the set of random numbers 1 to 201 Uh, one and two hundred one. Ah, uh, what are the what will be the outlier? One ninety nine hundred hundred one one zero three one zero nine one ten and two hundred one. Here you see one is extremely low and two hundred one is extremely high. So these both are outliers. You can see on the graph itself, the graph is following a trend. The values, the observation is following a trend, and there are like four data who are out of the class. They are called outliers. All right, and this is called as box plot. Box plot. okay uh, i'm sorry for the handwriting guys i'm using my mouse right now so you can yeah so these are outliers these are outliers and the entire data remains in this part okay now this is called as median and this is upper quartile this is lower quartile all right so this is called as outliers so now by this time you might have known about what is outliers okay this is not rocket science guys it's very simple the data which stands out itself is called as outliers again which is very important guys data analysis and data mining i just explained you about data uh, data mining right so data analysis you also know right data analysis we have been doing so read it once read it once i will also provide the uh, pdf file or uh, guys do one thing i'll find i'll do the uh, i'll give you the uh, uh, pdf file of this in the description also and you follow like you will find a relevant information in my linkedin account rahul inchal you can find and i'll post the link in the description as well rahul inchal if you serve or main link mein dal dunga then you click it on and then you will find on to my post section you will find lot of lot of things insightful things okay so you read read this i will leave it on to you now normal distribution here we touch the statistical part normal distribution again is very important and expect this question to be asked straight away what is normal distribution normal distribution is a type of continuous probability distribution that is system symmetric about its mean and in a graph normal distribution will appear as a bell curve now what is bell curve this is your bell curve all right the mean median and mode are equal now that is why it's a continuous probability distribution okay that's why normal distribution which means 50% of the data lies on the left side of the uh, uh, mean and 50% of the data lies on the right side of the uh, mean median and mode okay because the zero is mean median and mode mean median mode are equal that is in the between and everything is equally distributed so all of them are located at the center of the distribution okay 68% of the uh, data lies within the first standard deviation now this is your first standard deviation so whatever i am marking right now is the 68% of the data 68% of the data which lies in the uh, first uh, distribution and 95% uh, of the data lies in the second deviation so this is second deviation i'm marking now this is second deviation guys okay and almost like 99.7% of the data lies in the uh, let me change the color yellow yeah yellow it's on the okay that is this things okay and the third standard deviation now this is called as normal distribution guys normal distribution again expect this questions all right and 
by this time you should be it should be expected out of you that what do you like what is the uh, outlier what is mean median mode what is standard deviation what is bell curve what is normal distribution what is data analysis or something like that hey guys uh, so this is the dashboard i'm sorry to interrupt in between but this is the dashboard which i have created in the last video and see how insightful these things are right so i've created i've given a lot of time for this i've i've created i like it took me a lot of time to create this dashboard for you and like explain it so i would the link is given in the card as well in the description i would want you to watch this and then let's continue with the ongoing video so the next question is uh, write some python what are some python libraries guys which is very very again important when you uh, go for exploratory data analysis numpy uh, numpy is numerical python which means you can um, perform a numerical operation or mathematical operation using num numpy we usually import it as np pandas pandas is uh, to load the data set and to access the data sets for example uh so the data we you have to load it onto the jupyter notebook right so for that you use pandas and we load it as ped all right and pandas is for, as np and matplotlib is visualization in jupyter notebook guys uh we visualize uh, uh, in jupyter notebook also so for that uh, matplotlib comes into play and seaborn is another uh, visualization tool in jupyter notebook or library you can say scipy again sklearn model uh, in machine learning uh, scikit is again one more uh, library in python which we use all right so now what do you mean by data wrangling guys again guys uh, this uh, data mining data wrangling data analysis and uh, these things are might it might confuse you confuse you but have a have a demarcation line in every every other things okay you should and end product is you have the same um, meaning for everything if you don't get anything just i'll i'll give you suggestion that say whatever you comes in your mind because 70% of the things will be right but then again keep it as a last option all right please don't do it every other uh, now and then and like understand that you might get caught also so it's up to you so that's why study properly all right now data wrangling is the process of cleaning again guys cleaning structuring and enriching uh, the raw data into a desirable usable format for a better decision making now what does uh, data wrangling includes enriching enrichment structuring cleaning validating discovering and publishing all right now these all things comes together making the term called as data wrangling all right what is the significance of exploratory data analysis e d a all right now what do you mean by eda now eda helps us to understand the data better of course like when you do eda then only you will be able to take the insights it helps you to obtain confidence in your data to a point where you are ready to engage a machine learning algorithm unless and until you are not done with the 100% of eda like everything data cleaning um, taking out unnecessary values duplicate values and replacing the null values mean median mode whatever it is there and removing unnecessary columns which which might not be uh, usable for example if there are uh, say 1000 uh, rows all right and there are there is one row called name so individual name so every name will be individual right so name column column doesn't make any sense all right whereas uh, age column or sex column is very 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 important so as to get the insights about the age group or whether the guy belongs to a teenager or a adult or a uh, or a aged person like like similarly goes for uh, male and female right so you can discover the hidden trends and insight from the data of course that is what eda does right so that is the main point of that now what is the criteria to to say whether a developed data model is a good model or not now this this question is being asked i have seen my my friends getting this questions uh, i'm like this question is from uh, data science but then again you should have a good knowledge about it so the good model should be intuitive insightful and self explanatory for example uh it has to be intuitive like it 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 should give out the values okay you don't have to do much things but it should give out the values insightful means it it should contain some in like values which are re relevant right because there are like plenty of the data and you start building uh, graphs or visualizing it uh, which is not necessary for example if someone is asking you about sales in california and you are giving uh, the trend in uh, india or asia or pakistan or something like that then there is irrelevant right so it has to be insightful and self explanatory so it's like 
it should not give it should not take very good amount of efforts and concentration to understand the things better because you are making things simpler for the board members so it's your responsibility to make it self explanatory all right so the model developed should be able uh, able to easily consumed by the clients for actionable and profitable results so the model which you build right so that has to serve the purpose of the um, clients or the or the board members or anywhere like in, to any to any any like any person you are giving the um, presentation to fine uh, right yeah so a good model should easily adapt to changes according to the business requirements okay if data gets updated the model should be able to scale according to the new data that's why you build the machine learning algorithm and model you build so that everything every every now and then if data gets dumped into the uh, new data comes into the place of the old data then it had it should give the same accuracy that's why you would find out the accuracy of the model all right so next uh, next question is again very very important guys make a star note of it don't don't miss out these things explain descriptive predictive and prescriptive analysis now by far if you find any i find this question is this question the most simplest question all right but yet is very important question first and foremost thing is descriptive what do you mean by descriptive now learn it like this what's going on now that is the duty or that is the that is the job of the data analyst what's going on how you are going to tell by making dashboard by make, by using business intelligence what's going on you analyze the data all right you analyze the data you make the dashboards you make the visualization that is called as descriptive analysis what is predictive analysis as the name su name suggests by watching this dashboard you are going to predict what is going to happen by forecasting by data mining by regression by simulations all right and then what is going to happen this is going to happen so what measures are we going to take so what should be that is called as prescriptive prescribe karna right so what should we do optimization decision tree mathematical and programming um, whatever it is all right so these are the things fine so this is three different kind of analysis descriptive predictive and prescriptive as the name suggests descriptive what's going on predictive what is going to happen prescriptive what should be done or what should we do all right yeah so now again it is very important guys this is again very important this question can be asked in the data science questions as well and data analyst question as well now, what are the different sampling techniques now what do you mean by sample now sample is nothing but when you take out sample as the name suggests it's self explanatory as the name suggests take out some sample from a group now how you are going to take that is the different things simple random sampling stratified sampling systematic sampling judgmental or purposive sa sa sampling cluster sampling now simple random sampling as the name suggests you are simply randomly picking out any any so for example if this is a population all right so i'll give you example okay if this is a population of say 1 million people all right 1 million people and you have to take out say like 10000 10000 10k 10k people now this will become a sample of this all right so now how you are going to choose this 10k people now these are different different methods simple random sample is nothing but you pick out random any randomly people and then pick out and make that 10000 people now systematic uh, sample means you make them stand in a line and by every each interval for example in the multiple of 2 in the multiple of 10 in the multiple of 100s you pick out people and then collect them so that is called as systematic sampling stratified sampling is nothing but you make a group out of it all right you make some random groups so 10 10000 k you make some random groups of uh, 1 million right 10000 10 100 groups okay you 100 groups up banaoge you will make 100 groups and then you will select one group out of it that is called as stratified sampling and cluster sampling is again similar to stratified sampling but you make this 100 100 groups uh, with a trend with a with a similarity all right with a similarity for example there will be male or there will be like uh, uh, in 100 uh, if say more than 75 one group more than 71 group or uh, 65 to 71 group or something like this all right you make a sample or make sorry you make the groups in like which follow some trend and then you select one of the one of the group all right so that is the uh, cluster sampling Fine. So I hope you understood. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the different types of hypothesis testing? Again, important. Hypothesis testing is a technique used by statistician and scientists to to accept or reject statistical hypothesis. 
all right so null hypothesis there is no uh, there is two kind of hypothesis that is null hypothesis and h1 hypothesis uh, alternate hypothesis now it states or it's the spelling is wrong it says that there is no relation between now what do you mean by null hypothesis null hypothesis means it there is no relation between predictive and outcome variable all right so for example you predict something you predict something you, as a data scientist you predict something and there is one outcome which comes right there is one outcome which comes and there is no relation onto it there is no relation onto it that is called as null hypothesis it said that there is no relation between predictive and outcome variable in the population example there is no association between the patient's bmi and diabetes example alternate hypothesis on the other hand states that it's it, it is it is denoted as h1 it states that there is some relation between the predictor and the outcome variable in the population for example there could be an association between the bmi patient bmi and diabetes all right so yeah that is it now next and the last very most important thing again you make you can make a star note of it that's why i have given two slides for it what is univariate bivariate and multivariate analysis now as the name says guys there are a lot of definition but again i would like if you want to learn much about it then i would suggest you to watch this video video again and again so that everything comes to your mind in the interview you just have to click one word and then everything goes as as per your accordings okay so yeah so first of all univariate let's see what is univariate so first of all like understand the name what is the meaning or uh, what meaning can you derive univariate means one bivariate means two multivariate means more than two all right so keep this in mind and then try to analyze everything and then everything will be on your line itself univariate statistics summarizes only one variable at a time it summarizes only one variable at a time example height of the uh, height of the students in the class so it has only one variable right it has only one variable in centimeter that is height of the uh, students bivariate statistics compare two variables say you add one more column male or female all right boy or a girl all right so there are two columns now uh, height and boy or a girl sex all right multivariate statistic compares more than two variables so whatever um, excel sheet you give you see there are like multiple columns right so that is what it does not deal with the causes univariate does not deal with causes or relationship of, of course it won't it won't deal with the causes or relationship because there is nothing to relate with right there is nothing to compare with it deals with causes and relationship and this analysis is done all right because there are only two you just make the trend and everything is done it also deals with the now multivariate also deals with the causes and relationship but it has more number of columns all right so you have to pick and choose what relationship you want to right that's the multivariate there are multiple columns right yeah so univariate does not depend uh, does not contain any dependent variable of course there is only one variable how can you say that it is dependent or independent right in bivariate it contain only one dependent variable and one independent variable for example x y and uh, say for example uh, the name of the um, say how can i ex uh, so uh, what what example can i give mm. so yeah let let it be uh, uh, like male and female so say average average height say 170 uh, cm and it say 160 cm all right so in this what will be the dependent variable this will be dependent variable on male or female because uh, 170 changes if this changes right so i'm like in a nutshell i'm trying to give you this example guys this is not the real example but yeah every time consider that i would be able to explain this in a much better way if i was having this perfect data set but you understand this one dependent and one independent variable so y is equals to uh, mx plus c this is the equation of line right if you have studied uh, uh, statistics right so this is this is what it is all right so y is what is y i would want you to uh, guys so let's let's do it one thing uh, i would want you to comment me on the comment box what is y is independent or dependent and x is independent or independent value all right so yeah it is similar to bivariate and contains more than one dependent variable now the purpose of univariate analysis is to describe all right to describe the trend so so for example uh, boys have uh, so again like uh, so one one column it has so in that you can like uh, see how much is the average so for example what is the mean of the uh, average age of the average height of the uh, students of the class all right so you can analyze that the purpose of univariate analysis is to explain so 
the purpose of univariate analysis is to explain all right so you know what the purpose of multivariate data analysis is to study the relationship among p attributes classify the n collect collected samples into homogeneous group and make inferences about the underlying population from the sample now guys don't go into this don't 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 uh, rely upon this definition i'll tell you what is multivariate guys so whatever data we get it's almost multivariate because it has n number of columns and n number of rows right so everything will be multivariate all right we only use some part of uh, linear regression for this but everything is multi multivariate fine so multivariate what does it try to do it tries to like do a lot of steps in between a lot of things in between try to find the relation between different different uh, different different um, you know samples or homogeneous groups or uh, say like inferences it, it try to find the inferences about the um, samples of a population which is being collected right so these are the things now the example of univariate data can be hide all right the, the thing which i've told you example of bivariate data can be temperature and ice all right the example of this data type suppose advertisers advertisers want to compare the popularity of four advertisement on a website and then click rates and then measures blah 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 okay so you can read so example is like there are plenty of the examples which are which are there in the market all right so now univariate analysis analysis can be described now this you have to like mention all right central tendency central tendency is mean median mode all right we can definitely find dispersion quartiles bar charts histograms pie chart and frequency frequency distribution tables now these visualization we can do for univariate for bivariate we can find coefficient uh, correlation coefficient linear regression logistic regression scatter plots box plots all right so linear and regre uh, linear and logistic regression are the models which we try to find out uh, in uh, in machine learnings multivariate analysis analysis can be used using multiple regression different different kind of regression factor analysis classification and regression trees cluster analysis principal component analysis cl clustering bar charts dual axis bar charts okay or dual dual axis charts so these are the different kind of things which you can do now guys i have tried to cover almost very very basic but yet important questions onto this slides now this data this uh, ppt or this pdf you will find in the description and also in my linkedin you will find that i would request you to guys subscribe the channel and help me grow and i will help me give me uh, insightful data for you and if you have any doubt you can always go in the comment box and i'll always i'm always ready to help you guys and i'll meet you and don't forget to watch the previous video in which i have tried to make the um, dashboard for in power bi for the sales data of us all right so i'll meet you in the next video with the insightful videos like this and i want you to stay happy and healthy stay safe have a good day bye bye take care